Welcome back everyone to 6.8 Indeterminate Forms and L'Hopital's Rule. Let's jump right back into it with using L'Hopital's Rule to solve a variety of types of limit questions. All right, so here we have a limit and let's try to figure this one out. It looks like one over x is gonna head towards zero and natural log would head towards infinity. These are both as x goes to infinity. So this is an indeterminate of, indeterminate of form zero times infinity. So, what can we do? Well, we need to rewrite this in a way where we can use L'Hopital's rule. So if I just rewrite it as natural log of x over x, then you can see that this is an indeterminate of form infinity over infinity, and therefore we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule would say, well, take the derivative of natural log, take the derivative of x, and so this is going to head towards zero. All right, so there we go. This limit heads towards zero, and this is how we can rewrite uh, indeterminates into kind of different forms. Now here in part b, let's see, 1 over sine of x as x goes to 0 would go to infinity, and likewise 1 over x would head towards infinity. So this is one of these forms, infinity minus infinity. So the claim is in this case we want to get a common denominator, and hopefully this will help us out. So with a common denominator, that common denominator would be x times sine of x. The first fraction looks like it needs an x, and the second fraction looks like it needs a sine of x. So now let's take a look here. If I plugged in 0 for x, I would get 0 over 0, sorry, 0 minus 0 divided by 0 times 0. So that's going to 0 over 0. So this is now an indeterminate form, which we can apply L'Hopital's rule to. So let's take the derivative of both the top and the bottom. And when I do that, I'm going to get 1 minus cosine x divided by sine of x, and here we need to use the product rule, so derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, and looking at this, this still heads towards, well, 1 minus 1 divided by uh, 0 plus 0, so this still heads towards 0 over 0. Uh, so we need to apply L'Hopital's rule a second time. So take the derivative yet again, and let's see, I'm going to get uh, let's see, this would be positive sine of x divided by cosine of x plus, and now here we need to use the product rule, so derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, and then it should be negative. There we go. And now let's check. If I was to plug in 0 for x now, I would have 0 on top, and then I'd have 1 plus 1 minus 0. Ooh. So this is 0 over 2, so that's actually equal to 0. Now this last one here, part C, the claim is a little bit tricky. So this is where we actually want to go back and use this calculus 1 theorem that we had brought up earlier, which says that you can push the limits inside of continuous functions, essentially. So let's see how we can apply this here. So first of all, this is an indeterminate. So if I was to plug in 0 for x, you'd see that I'd have 0 to the 0. So the idea here is that I'm going to rewrite this with the exponential and natural log. So these are really, you know, inverse functions, so they would usually cancel out. But the claim is by bringing them into existence temporarily, some good things happen. And those good things are the power rule for the natural log. So the power rule says that I can take that exponent there and move it down in front. So therefore I have the 3x times the natural log of 2x. And now the final thing, this is where I want to use my theorem. My theorem says, well, because e is a continuous function, I can push this limit inside of it. So it'll be the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 3x times the natural log of 2x. And now if I can figure out what that's going to be, I can solve my problem. So let me switch pens. I'm going to go to a purple pen here. And I'm going to try to solve this problem now. So 3x times the natural log of 2x. Now as x heads towards 0, uh, 3x would head towards 0, and the natural log of 2x, well, this will head towards negative infinity. Because as x gets very close to 0, natural log gets very close to negative infinity. So this is an indeterminate of type 0 times infinity. So I can rewrite it. And I'll rewrite this as the natural log of 2x 
divided by 1 over x. Notice that I factored out this 3 as well. So now this is going to head towards negative infinity, and 1 over x is going to head towards infinity. So this is now an indeterminate form, infinity over infinity, that we can actually apply L'Hopital's rule to. So L'Hopital's rule here says now the derivative of the top should be 1 over 2x, and then chain rule says I need it times 2. And then derivative of the bottom, well, this is going to be negative 1x to the negative 2. Now it's just algebra time. So after these things kind of cancel out, and I have this x to the negative 2 on the bottom, so that's really like an x squared. So this is going to be just negative x. So as x gets closer and closer to 0, well, this entire limit's going to head towards 0. So therefore, my original limit is going to head towards e to the 0, which is the same thing as 1. So kind of interesting. I maybe wouldn't have guessed that this limit right here would be heading towards 1. OK. Let's try a few more. So L'Hopital's rule to calculate the following limits. If I was to just plug in 0, you could see that this would head towards, uh, let's see, positive infinity to the 0 power. So again, we're going to try to use this kind of trick. So I'm going to bring into existence this e in this natural log. And let me use the power rule all in one here. So I'm going to write the natural log of 3 over x. And then I'm going to bring down this power. So it would be 5x. Now we can push this limit inside of the exponential. Because again, it's a continuous function. And so I want to figure out what is this limit here. And this looks pretty similar to my previous one, except for now the x is on the bottom. So let's see how that changes things. So I factor out the 5. And now as x goes to 0 uh, from the right, we're going to have this term goes to 0, and this one's going to head towards negative infinity. So again, let's go ahead and rewrite this. 5 times the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. And I'm going to write this as the natural log of 3 over x divided by this 1 over x business. And actually, let me do a property of logarithm to rip apart this 3 and this x. And you'll see that this actually will make things a little bit easier. So this is using the quotient rule for natural logs. And now we see that both of these are heading towards infinity. OK. So therefore, if I take the derivative on top and on bottom, then we have negative 1 over x. And then in the denominator, we have negative 1 over x squared. The claim is that this is a lot easier at this point. If, if you didn't rip apart this 3 over x, uh, you can still do it. It just it, the derivative is a little bit messier. So again, this simplifies, and my answer becomes 0. Plug this in up here. Again, we have e to the 0, which is equal to 1. All right, now let's try one here. Same sort of deal, but now x is heading towards infinity. So let's see. As x goes to infinity, this is going to be heading towards 0 raised to the infinity. And the claim is, if you're going too fast, uh, you'll think this is an indeterminate form, but the answer is actually just equal to 0. Okay. So looking back up here, our indeterminate forms, well, we don't have uh, 0 raised to the infinity. We have 0 raised to the 0. We have 1 raised to the infinity, but we don't have 0 raised to the infinity. So the claim is, this is well known. This should just be 0. But if you weren't being careful, well, you would end up doing all this work up here, essentially. So all this work up here, uh, and let me make this red so that way we re remember that this is wrong. And now everywhere you see a zero, essentially you would have an infinity. So all of these limits here aren't heading towards zero, but are heading towards infinity. So I'll just change them here. And therefore, the final answer would be that x would be heading towards infinity. 
So you'd have e to the infinity equals infinity. And yeah, that's not the same thing as zero at all. So you would get the wrong answer. So again, you have to remember zero to the infinity uh, is not an indeterminate form. This is something that we know what the limit should be. All right, on the other hand, this one right here is heading towards one to the infinity, right, as x goes to infinity. So therefore, this is an indeterminate we do have to be concerned about and careful. So again, whenever you have kind of these exponents uh, that are variables, it's a good idea to use this whole e in natural log business. So I'm going to apply this e in the natural log. And then with the power rule, I can bring the exponent x down in front as the coefficient. We can push this limit on the inside, again, because e is a continuous function. And so again, my goal is really to figure out what this limit is. So uh, looking at this, as x goes to infinity, it looks like x is going to go to infinity. And this natural log of 1 plus 2 over x is going to head towards 0, right? Or really the natural log of 1, which is 0. So we need to rewrite this a little bit. So the natural log of 1 plus 2 over x divided by 1 over x. So now we can see that we've got this in the form uh, where this is heading towards 0 and the numerator is heading towards 0. OK, so according to L'Hopital's rule, we can go ahead and take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So the derivative of the numerator is going to be 1 over 1 plus 2 over x times chain rule, remember, so I have to take the derivative of this 2 over x. So this is going to be negative 2 x to the negative 2. In the denominator, right, well, this is really the same thing as x to the negative 1. So when I take its derivative, I'm going to get negative x to the negative 2. This is nice. We can see a little cancellation happens here. So what I have left over is just the limit as x goes to infinity. And it looks like I still have a 2 here, and divided by 1 plus 2 over x. Now, as x goes to infinity, this is going to be heading towards 2 over 1 plus 0. So that's just going to be 2. So plug this back in, right? My answer is not 2. It's actually e to the 2, or just e squared. All right, and that should do us here in 6.8, indeterminate forms in L'Hopital's rule. And in fact, that ends all of chapter 6. So take a nice long break now, and I'll see you next time in Chapter 7.